Well, hello and welcome to Insight with Political Tours and Beyond the Headlines. Our guest today is a world-renowned travel photographer whose work can be seen in places as varied as the Daily Mail, the National Geographic and The Economist. He's got a unique ability to find the beautiful in the most challenging of places from North Korea to Iraq and Papua New Guinea, and also document ways of life that may soon disappear. He's Eric Laforgue, and he's joining us today from his home in Toulouse, France. Hello, Eric, and welcome to Insight. Hello, good, e good evening, good morning for everybody, <laughs> depending on where you are. Uh, it, it's going to be a great discussion. Today, we're going to focus just on a small slice of your work, Ethiopia and its huge variety of tribes peoples. But before we do that, before we start looking at the photos, I just want to ask you about how you got into photography. And am I right in saying you didn't actually set out to be a professional photographer? It was more that the profession found you. Yes, in fact, I was working in the telecom industry for 15 years. And we had a company which was sold to a big uh, Japanese company. And as you can read in the newspaper, sometimes in the headlines, you know, they took the company and they fired all the management. And I was part of the management. So I was uh, on the door and uh, I get some money because I was fired and I started to travel. And as I like to do things, I, I started to take pics. I put them on Flickr.com, the very famous website. And suddenly some magazine from all around the world asked me to buy the pictures. I didn't know I, I could buy, I could uh, sell, sorry, my pictures. And so I say, okay, let, let's do this uh, seriously. And now for more than 15 years, I do this job. And uh, I try to keep on discover new cultures, new people, new tradition. And we will speak about this, I think, uh, in the next hour. Yeah, that is a fantastic break for you. And you're now, I mean, your portrait photography is really well, world renowned. Um, we're going to look at Ethiopia, as I was just, just saying, and, and let's just dive in straight away. So let's bring the photos up, Isabel. Um, you, you've you been working for about two decades, I think, um, and we are going to, we've got the map up here. The first photos we're going to look at are the from the group called the Afar, which is yes. in northern Ethiopia. So let's, yes. just, let's just start with those. Let's just go to the next one. Yes, the, the, the Afar people, they are uh, living in three countries, in fact, Djibouti, Eritrea, and Ethiopia. So, in fact, they are nomads, they have camels, they go all over the borders, they, they don't know about the visa, the stamps on the passports. And they are really interesting people because very few tourists go in this place and they keep their tradition and their tradition is like taking care of the hair. And you, you can see by, by the hair that they look like the pharaohs from, the, from Egypt. They have the same curly hair, uh, like you can see uh, on the hieroglyph or things like this. And they, they used to put some butter, some ghee on the hair to make them beautiful. And they can spend some hours doing this. The men, they help each other to have the, this kind of uh, Afro hair. On the next picture, picture, there is a tradition which is very strange in the Afar. You, I, I don't know if you can see it, but the, 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 the teeth are broken with a stone mm. to make them sharp. You see it? Uh, and they do this when the, the girls and the boys are 10, 12. And it's something which is a beauty sign in the tribe. So it's, it's very impressive when you see it. And it's very impressive because most of the time the mm. Afar take care of the teeth very seriously. They use a stick made from the branch of wood. And for hours in the day, they brush, they brush, they brush, they brush. Not only the Afars, many people in Africa do this. So they have this kind of uh, beautiful smiles. I know that Ethiopia is one of your favorite places and you traveled, you've been traveling there since you were a child, is that right? Yeah, because my father was a military in Djibouti in, uh, seven, in 1973. <laughs> so I met my first Afars, I met them in Djibouti when we were in the desert. I was... Uh, I saw those guys with the big, they have a big knife also, they have the big hair. So for me, it was incredible to meet the, the, those people. So yes, my, my first time in Ethiopia was in 73 when I was nine years old. Yeah, and you've been back how many times now? Oof, I think more than 10 times, more than 10. Right, okay, let's go, let's go on to the next photo. So here's the teeth you're talking about. Yeah, this is what I was saying. It's uh, really, really impressive. And for them, it's, a, it's totally cultural. 
So when we tell them that it's very strange, very weird, they don't understand. They, they say you are weird with your not with your teeth, <laughs> without those gaps and without this V shape. Yeah, we can almost see your reflection in her teeth there. <laughs> and this is another guy with the the, the hair. So they, they put the, the gi, and when the gi goes to the sun, the gi is starting to become white like this. And the funny thing that if you look in his back, you have the gi which is uh, melted by the sun <laughs> and which goes all along the spine. So it's very, very impressive. Uh -huh, to it's see, funny because uh, it, lo it looks like ash, so it's not, it's actually gi. It's, no, actually no, it, it, say, yeah. Yeah, it's gi because with the sun, it's very hot. This place is very hot. I think this place is one of, one of the most hottest places in Earth with uh, the desert in uh, Iran, you know? So uh, the temperature is crazy in this place. Okay, let's go on to the next one here. And the uh, last uh, one, she's uh, Afar. And uh, one point which is important is that they are very beautiful, but like on many of my pictures of my portraits, there is a sad story behind because in uh, the Afar people, they still practice the female uh, genital mutilation. So all the girls, they are cut. I won't give any detail tonight, but mm -hmm. it's very, very uh, barbaric. So the government tried to stop this, but it is impossible. And I'm very pessimistic about the fact that they will stop this, this tradition because virginity is so important for them. So they cut and they, they sue. If you yeah. see what so I mean, yeah. so it's very, very uh, strange. But one more time, it's a clash of culture when you start to argue about this. Yeah, no. Well, I think we'll come back and we'll talk talk more about that. But we'll also talk about um, your portrait photography as well and the techniques you use. We'll come back to that in a later. And your 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 renown for picking up um, the the people's eyes. That's what was one of your one of your trademarks. I know. Um, where yeah. where are we here? Yeah, still in the Danakil, so in the, the place where the Afar live. It is interesting to see that they still use some camel's caravan to go on a lake, to take the salt, and they will walk for hundreds of kilometers where the cars cannot go, both in Djibouti, in Eritrea, and, in, and especially in Ethiopia, to sell the salt for the, the cattle and for the human people, the, hum, the human beings. So. This is a crazy job because uh, they only work early in the morning because as soon as it is seven, eight o'clock, the temperature is uh, rising above 45, 50 degrees. It's really, really uh, incredible to see this. And you, you see some water. It's not the rain. In fact, the, the water is coming from below. So uh, it makes some fantastic pictures with the reflection and uh, with the, the symmetry of the the camels in the water. Fantastic. I think now we're going to shift. We're going to move from the north. And I think um, we're coming. Yes, it's, being, it is um, a north. Uh, it is a south of uh, Addis Ababa. It is called Alaba. It's an area with uh, Muslim and Christian people. From a geopolitics point of view, this is a place I'm very afraid of in the next years. Because, you know, in Ethiopia, there is a, some big uh, fighting at this moment in the north north near the the Eritrean border between Tigre. the Tigray and Tigre. the Oromo. Yes, yeah. yeah, very complicated situation. And in Alaba, it's a kind of miracle until now. Christian and Muslim live together in the same place. And uh, it's very interesting to visit inside the houses of the people because they say that they inv invented Facebook because on their wall, they describe their life. They paint what, what they live. So if they are Christian, they will put some uh, portrait of Jesus, some uh, extract from the Bible. If they are Muslim, they will put some uh, Mecca, uh, the, the, la, uh, the Kaaba from Mecca. If they travel by bus, they will paint a bus. If they have some guns, they will, put, they will paint a Kalashnikov. So it's really interesting because most of those people don't have not go to school, okay? They, they cannot read and they cannot, um, uh, they cannot read uh, and write, sorry. So it's a very interesting way to, to understand their culture and to see very quickly what is their life. And they it, are really it's, welcoming. It's so colorful. And I think we've got another slide too. And also, so, yeah. it seems so house proud as well. It's um, you know, clearly- It's very clean. It, it, inside it is very clean. Most of the time, half of the house, 
they, they welcome the, the cows, the cattle. He sleeps inside the house, but it's very clean. And uh, the house is called Tukul. It's a round house with a big roof, which mm. is like a five, six meter high. And it's very, very beautiful. The only thing is that there, are, there is no windows, usually very small windows. And they do some fire all day long and all night long for the mosquitoes. So when you enter the place, it's full of smoke. And I cannot understand <laughs> how the people can afford this because when we enter in the place after five minutes, we have the, the eyes red and yeah. we have to go out. I was, I was looking at some English prints um, uh, for sale recently and there was a, um, a photograph of open fires in, you know, in, in, the, in, in England and in Scotland in the mid 1700s. So we, would, we were doing very similar things here until quite recently in our culture. Um, let, let, so we get, we're moving down south, so we're coming down from the, the plateau from Amhara and the, the, the next uh, sort of series of photos are going to be in the Omo Valley. Yeah. And um, that there's, as well as talking about the tribes, there's some real um, challenges here faced by all the, the, the communities here. So perhaps talk about a bit about that. And then we'll talk about these lovely men with the big pot bellies. <laughs> so the, this area is really interesting. Why? Because in fact, you have the South Sudan border and you have Let's the go Kenya. back. Let's bring that previous slide back up so we can. Yeah. yeah there we go. There we go. So you have you have many borders in the in the south with the Kenya with South Sudan. So one more time, like for the Afar, the border do not exist for those people. You know. So and most of the time in this area, you don't have uh, you now you have the army, because we will speak about this later about the, the problem with the land grabbing and the the uh, the dam the big dam which makes problem in the in the tribes, but. It's really the far, for me, it's the far west. You see what I mean? So anything can happen. There is danger. A lot of tourists go there, but there is a real danger because you have guns everywhere. You have a, a Kalashnikov everywhere. They buy the Kalashnikov in Sudan, in South Sudan or Sudan for 50 euro or $70. You know, it's, it's really nothing. So this place is very interesting because it's huge. Some tribes you can access to them through asphalt road so it's easy to to meet them and so most of the tribes you have to to drive for two days in the bush or sometimes you have to walk so it's really really a uh, adventurous place for me okay and the, uh, the two things i think we're also going to talk about as we go through the slides are, are um really sort of down to government policy there's the development of an enormous um dam that's been built uh, on the omo river um, which has been built, and that's cutting the water supply that affects uh, many tribes' way of life. And also, I think in the, in the early 2000s, you saw the government lease huge swathes of land um, in, in that area to many foreign companies. In actual fact, that land wasn't cultivated, and it's been a big failure, but it also meant that uh, many of the nomadic tribes in that area were forced off the land. Um, so there's been a sort of double whammy um, with the dam being built and also this, this development, mass development of agriculture, which hasn't been very well. Yes, you have to understand that the people in this place, they only live thanks to the cows. They drink the milk of the cows every morning. They drink the blood of the cow. So they need, they need some space for the cows. And what happened when uh, we can see the, the, the next slide with the body, for example, in the Bodhi tribes, which is not a very famous tribe because it's not on the touristic route. But this, uh, the, those men a few years ago, they saw their field, their land, taken by a big Malaysian company. And so suddenly they had to keep their cow in their village. So those guys, they have thousands of cows. You cannot imagine. When you walk on the, on the ground, it's like 20 centimeters of uh, dungs, <laughs> mm. years and years and years of, uh, of co, co dungs, you know? Mm. So those guys, they, they explained me because I made uh, some stories about this, that without a big amount for the cows, they cannot live because the cows need a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, fresh land. grass. Raising, yes, yeah. not, not like in Europe where they are put in factories, you know, like, <laughs> mm. like a machine. For them, it's totally different. And also uh, another big problem was that the cows, could not go to drink some water in the rivers because the, they, they, they had some fences or they had some guards to keep the fields and so on. So it was, it was very, very sad. It seems that 
it changed a little bit those uh, last years because I heard that now they, they complain less and less. But I, I've not been there for two years, so I cannot say well, what are the, what's going the on? latest news. Yes. Okay, well, let, let, let's talk about uh, what's going on here. The, um, there's a competition going on here, isn't there? Yeah, every year, in fact, and this is interesting, be interesting because you will understand that. every year the, uh, during the spring, uh, the men, they, they go for six months in a special house alone. They don't have sex. Uh, people bring them some milk every morning and some uh, fresh cobbled and they drink, they drink, they drink for six months. And they can do this only if the cows are healthy. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it means that when the cows did not have the good grass and so on, they couldn't do this ceremony, which is very important ceremony. It is called a kael, K-A-E-L in the, in the body language. So for years and years, I, I was going there. I didn't see anybody fat. <laughs> and the people say, no, we cannot be fat. We don't have uh, enough milk to drink. And three years ago, I've been there. And suddenly I saw like 50, 40 uh, competitors very, very big, very, very tall, very, very uh, strong. And they compete to show how big they are and how uh, agile, how uh, agile, yeah. Agile, yeah. yeah, they are. Because they, they run, they jump. It's very interesting. You can see the, the next picture, perhaps. So they, 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 they run, they jump they, they, all day long. And at the end, they are totally tied. You imagine if you, because those guys are, have a regular uh, weight usually, you know, and I met one, he was 50 kilos and he, he became like 100 kilo, 120. So it's crazy, crazy, crazy. But they, they, they have to be fat from the, the belly. You see, mm -hmm. uh, this is the most important part. And uh, for them, it's just a honorific title. They don't gain money. They don't gain anything but it's very important to get the beautiful girls because the girls, they, they celebrate those people, those men like champions, you know, the same for, for us, for the Olympics, in fact. Yeah. You so can see the next one. Okay. Yes, another picture where you can see how fat they are. And it's very funny because they are so fat that when they walk, they walk like babies. You see what I mean? <laughs> like the babies, they, they start to walk, you know, they, they are hesitating, they, uh, they, they fall, and they look exactly like the babies when they walk because they, they are too big. And remember that for six months, they were just uh, lying on the floor, eating and eating and eating. So when they do the kail, it is like the first time after six months that they start to walk and to run. Mm. Great, the next, next slide, yeah. And this is the, the point. So the men are fat and for these days, the ladies, they put their best dress, they put their best hat, they put their best makeup to, to seduce the competitors. In all the ceremonies in Homo Valley, it's always a question of seducing each other. You know, it's very, very important. You show that you are a real man, you show that you are wealthy, and the girls, they show that they, they are attractive. So it's, it's very, very interesting to, to see how they manage to meet each other. And we will see the same thing in the Donga with uh, the Sulma uh, later. Yeah. Okay, next slide. So now we, we change. We are uh, near the Kenyan border. Uh, this is the Borana people. Borana people are very interesting because they do what we call the Gada. The Gada has been listed by UNESCO two years ago because they say that the Gada is the most uh, ancient uh, democracy. In fact, it's not a democracy, but every eight years, the powers go to a uh, different family from the clans. So they have many chiefs for each uh, area, but the thing is that the chief has this uh, phallic uh, uh, headwear. Yeah. Uh, symbol on the, mm -hmm. on the front. So it's very easy to recognize him and he's very, very respected. Whatever he says, you have to obey, <laughs> even if he says some stupid thing. So sometimes it's very strange because, for example, if somebody dies in the family who was supposed to be the next chief of the Gada, it can be someone who takes the power who, who, was, who was not prepared for this. 
I met one guy who was the chief of the GADA, but he was working in Addis Abeba. He was a, a mechanic, a me mm -hmm. he was working in the garage. So one day he had a call saying, your brother is dead. You have to go down to the, to the, to the tribe and to, you will be the next chief in, uh, in one year. So you have some educated people. Uh, it's not very common, but it happens. And who, are, who have to live their, uh, let's say, modern life and to come back in the tribe and to, to do the job. I and you were saying that this system is recognized by UNESCO? Yes, yes, yes. UNESCO has listed it as, uh, I don't, you know, they, they list the, the, the food, they list the monument, they list the town, but they also list the, I don't know in English the name, but... Uh, Cultural uh, institutions, that kind something of thing. Something like this, yeah, yes, something like this. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So if you put a GADA, G-A-D-A-A, -A, you will find. Yeah. Okay. And the Borana are very famous for one thing. They live near a big, big uh, uh, volcano. There is a huge caldera. And at the end of the caldera, there is a lake, of course. And the men for centuries, they go in this place to dig the, the ground and to take the salt. So those men, you have to understand that the heat is incredible. You cannot imagine the heat in this place. So they are naked. I ask him to put uh, underwear because it's complicated to sell some pictures where the people are totally naked, especially the men. Uh, hypocrisies. <laughs> Women, it's okay for the for the chest, for the breast. Uh, and so those men, they go in a, in a, in a special water, which is a very, very acid. So they have to put, you can put the next uh, picture, perhaps perhaps we will see on the next picture. Uh, they put some uh, some plastic in the nose in mm. the ears because if not they they have they have uh, they have attacks by the, the the chemicals from the lake you see uh -huh. what i mean and you see he's white just because he went in the lake he came out and he's becoming white because of the sun and all the skin is cracked all the eyes are burnt it's an incredible job but this is the only activity they have in the area and they do this for i told you for centuries Right. The okay. next uh, pics, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. This is a drone picture to show you uh, how they work. They make some. They put the salt in some places like this, and the f it's not funny, but the, yes, the funny thing is, you have to go back to the top of the volcano where the village is. Uh, it takes like two hours, and the heat is really it's a oven. Believe me, it's incredible. And it is the job of the woman to bring back the salt to the top. The God. men, they don't do this. <laughs> so well, we've, well. we've got we've got quite a few. We're going to go through about another sort of um, 15, 20 slides or so. But I know that there are people who've been to um, Ethiopia before. I know that some some of you have actually been and, and photographed some of these tribes as well. Um, so do please start putting your questions in the Q&A box here, just here. And okay. um, we will be able to bring you through to uh, ask questions to Eric in, in just a moment. Now we we are we're moving now to a tribe which is very it's very well known. This this yes, it's tribe. very famous. I just wanted to to focus on one thing. So this 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 uh, ceremony is very special. When you are uh, teenagers, you need to become an adult, and to become an adult in the hammer, you have to jump over. Uh, I think it's 10, 10 cows. So they put 10 cows close, and the man has to walk three times on the cows. It's not easy, but usually they, they manage to, to, to do it. But and just it because very... we didn't say at the beginning, it's the hammer, and that's spelled, how's that spelled, Eric? H A M E R, hammer. hammer. Okay. And the, the very interesting thing is that uh, the woman from the jumper, so there is one jumper who becomes an adult, and the woman from the jumper family, they come to see some special men. They are called the maize. They are the weepers, in fact. Those men will whip the, the woman. The woman asks to be whipped, and where they are, when, when they are whipped, they get some scars on the back, on the, on the, the arms, on, mm. sometimes on the face, but not so much, on the breast. And it means that later, when the woman will become old, she will be able to go to see the jumper and to ask for help and saying, see the scars I have. I was there the day you became an adult and I suffered for you. So you need to help me. It's very strange to understand for us. You must understand that the woman, they fight to be whipped. You see what I mean? 
Mm. Yeah, they, it's it's not a submission. They they fight to be whipped by the mice, by by, by those men, mm. because they will need it in the future to get a social statue towards the jumper who will become the head of the family, of course, because he is a man. So this tradition, this place is very touristic. Sometimes you have like 100 uh, tourists uh, attending the ceremony, but they, they still do it for real. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to many, many hammer who now live in town in Addis Abeba, etc. And same again, it's not possible for them to stop this kind of ceremony, even if it is a little barbaric for the woman. We can see the, uh, the other peak, perhaps we would see the man jumping. So in few words, the man has to be naked and he has to have a special hair style, very strange, like the, the hair is <laughs> like he, he was in a storm, you know, so the hair mm. like this. And uh, for the man, if he doesn't succeed to jump over the, the cows, it's shame. It means that if he doesn't succeed, he will have to leave the village and go away nobody will speak to him everybody will say that he's a woman so it's a real shame to be honest i have seen some men who failed they have three tries to do it they could do it five six seven times so in fact everybody becomes an adult you see what i mean yeah yeah okay it's a, a bit next <clears throat> and just a picture to show the, the the happiness of the woman in this ceremony so all during the ceremony, they, they sing, they jump, they sweat, and they ask to be whipped. And you can see the, the, the back, which is whipped. It's a very, very uh, impressive to see. And are they whipping themselves there? No, 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 no. no. The whip, it's very, no. it's very strange. The whip has to be made by, by a young man yeah. who has uh, jumped in the year, the maize. It's a special statue. Those men, in fact, they jumped in the, in the year. And they, they live in community, three, four people together, yeah. and they eat for free in the villages, and they live in the in the bush. It's very yeah. complicated to explain in few words. <laughs> okay, okay. Next slide. Ah, now we go back to ah, we go back to Omo River, in Omo Valley. So those men are the Dasanech. Dasanech is a very famous tribe in the Omo River. Those people live close to the river. They use the water for agriculture, for maize, for sorghum. So for them, it's very, very important to have the water from the Omo River. And those people, they, they, are, uh, they, they have the problem because of the dam. Because yeah. the dam, in fact, blocks the water. It's not complicated to understand. And so the level is going down, down. Every year, the Omo River is up, 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 and goes in the field, you know? so. Now, they, every year, they have less and less water going in the field. So I don't know the name in English, but les, les alluvions, the good things coming from the, from, the, yeah. from the water which goes in the field, yeah. if they don't go in the field. So they are really angry about the government, but it's very complicated for them to have a voice in this uh, revolution, you know, because it is, it is also a revolution to have the dam, because the dam will bring electricity in all the country, and they even sell the electricity to Sudan, to Djibouti, everywhere. So you have to understand that there is a balance to do between the tradition mm. and also the, this big progress. Because in this area, people, uh, they are okay to have electricity. Yeah, so Some the, of them, the water table has gone lower and there's also no flooding as well. And the whole yes. ecosystem is creating you know, their structure of agriculture as well is based yes. around that. Yes, so they have more drought because less water brings more drought, of course. And so as they live only by what they grow, because they don't have a supermarket, you know, they don't have a 7-Eleven next to their village. So it's a very, very big thing for them. And just to speak about this peak, this peak is about the ceremony called the Dimi. The Dimi is about the circumcision. Uh, circumcision for the boys and for the girls, like for the Afar. So if your boy and girls are not cut, you are not a big man. So it is the, 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 the man in the tribe who organized the ceremony and who asked his uh, daughter to be cut by the grandmother, by the mother, etc. And we what age are they when this happens? Uh, it happens uh, it, every year. There is, uh, in fact, they leave the, their village and they, they build another village not very far, but in the bush. 
and they will make a ceremony every day. And every day they will take some uh, two girls, three girls, for, and they will, they will do inside a, a hut. It is impossible to attend this because they know, they have understood that it is shocking for us. And also it is forbidden to do this, but there is no police in the place. So nobody can stop them from uh, doing this. And the same, when they say, when a girl is not cut, everybody will mock the girl and the people call the girl the monkey if they are not cut. You see what I mean? So yeah. even in the tradition of the young people, they, they say, we have to do this. We have no choice because everybody will mock us and we, we cannot stay in the village. We have to leave the village. It's a very, very difficult issue. Yeah. We can see the other pick. I think so we this, missed the word. I didn't hear the word you were saying earlier. Was it sedimentation? Me, sedimentation, I think you were talking about. Ah, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So this is uh, the, the same picture with the men. You, you can see that they have a cheetah skin. You see, you see it? The, yeah. uh, the, the, the leopard. It's, uh, you must understand that it is very, very expensive for them to get this because there is no cheetah in this area. So the man, they have to walk for days and days, and it's very dangerous because they will cross other tribes on the way. You see, like the Toposa, like their enemies, and they have to, 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 to hunt for the cheetah, and they come back with the, the fur and with the skin. So for us, it's something like uh, folkloric, but, but for them, it has a very big meaning because it means that they are very uh, strong warriors. Okay. And no fear, they don't. Do you, do you know what I'm gonna do? Um... Uh, Eric, I'm going to take in a couple of questions now from people yeah. while we're, li we're listening in, and then we're going to come back to the photos because we've got yeah. more to show. So let's just bring in a, a question if we can, Isabel, if we can bring in Geraldine Gill, um, we'll just bring in a question from, from Jerry first, and then we'll come back. So um, Jerry's got one, you'll, you'll, there we go. Go ahead, Jerry, go ahead. I think you've got a, a, a quick question there. Go ahead. Yes. Um when we were photographing that rite of passage, um, there was a tremendous amount of alcohol going on. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and, and we were five women. And, and um, how, we how long ago was this, Jerry? How long ago was this? 2010, so 10 years ago. Okay. And um, it, the the uh, we were promised that this was this event was going to happen, and it it was starting to get dark, and so we left because I said, "Ladies, they they were following us with their Kalashnikovs, <laughs> and 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 we have about a mile to walk back to our vehicle." So we got some of those images that you have, but. No, not the ones the of the original the rite of passage. Eric, is that but, right? The, would, would that yeah. apply to so which groups would that apply to? And let's let's, let's that, bring was that was the hammer. That was the hammer. This is a big problem because you have to understand that they start to drink in the afternoon. Okay, they all gather to. In fact, they wait for the from the, from the people from the neighbors from the neighborhood. So from the other village, and sometimes the village are twenty kilometers or thirty kilometers far. So the men they arrive. And when the big men, because it's all about the big men, the chief, the elders, the leaders. So when they arrive, they start to drink. So if you are lucky like me, they start to drink at like two o'clock, three o'clock, and they start to jump at four, five, six. But every time when I saw like you, the ceremonies, it was when the sunset was <laughs> down, 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 down. And more, the, the more the sun, the sun is down, the more the alcohol is high. <laughs> so <Right>. yeah, <laughs> there is a balance, but usually it's not aggressive. To be honest, in Ethiopia, I, I never, everybody drinks a lot. They make their, their own alcohol with the sorghum usually. Uh, so it's very, very strong, but I didn't have any problem. Nobody steal my camera, nobody push me, nobody yeah. spit on me. It was okay, but you have to follow the rule. This is the thing. You have to make an agreement with the chief, with the leader before. Right. You have, it's very important to first to make an agreement. If you have to make agreement after, good luck. <laughs> now, yeah, I want but... to go back to the slides if we can, because I, I, what I want to show people is that I want to get um, just show the, a few more of the sort of tribal photographs, and then I want to get onto the portraits, which really are 
Um, uh, so Eric is really very well known for his portraits. But let's just, just let's have a look at a couple of these photographs here, which are, are very striking. We have these, um, what, just explain what's going on here, um, Eric. They have to hit each other here for... This, yeah, this is the Donga. The Donga is a ceremony which takes place all over the year in the Surma people, Surma or Suri, you can say the, the boss name. So they are in the deep, deep, deep Omo Valley. Uh, this place is very special because people, they don't listen, listen to the government. So they have a lot of clash with the army. The army is there, you know, they have uh, some camps, some bases, some small bases. And so this ceremony is the Donga. The Donga is just to fight. They just want to show that they are stronger than the other village. So they start to fight with uh, like a two and a half meter long uh, sticks. Usually the more, the stronger you are, the less protection you wear. So some people, they come without any protection. Some, they put a kind of helmet made with uh, clothes. It's really incredible. It's dangerous because they don't care about you. They don't care about your position or your camera. And they drink, they drink, they drink. But it's, it's really impressive to see. And there is a legend that says that they do this to marry the girl. No, no, it's not this. It's just about fighting. And like for the other tribe, the girls are seduced by those men. And the girls, they, they offer them a necklace. And the necklace means, I want to date you. It's not about the wedding. No, no, it's just about fun <laughs> and, uh, and fighting. We Let's can see the other one. Um, two, three photographs. Um, there we go. Because they definitely. And the, blood yeah, the same blood. If you are, if you have blood on you, if you have some wounds, if you are, because the the stick really cuts. You know, it's really impressive, and you can see the ends of the fighters when they fight for ten years or fifteen years. All the all the fingers are broken. You know, my my, my hands are like this. The, their hands are like uh, 120 years old people. <laughs> it's incredible. And, but they, they, don't, they don't fear anything. And when they fight, they fight for real. It's not for the, for the, for the, for the photographers. It's not for the tourists. It's just a question of uh, ego and a question of uh, strength. OK. Next slide. This guy's great. You see this guy has protection on the I'm neck because the neck. the neck is very important. They, they, some people are killed. Uh, they are wounded, they are killed. If you kill someone, you will have to give 20 cows to the family. That's all. They won't fight. This is the rule. If you kill someone, you made a mistake because you are not supposed to kill. You're just supposed to humili humili humiliate your, mm. your, uh, the, the guy in front. It's like in the box, in boxing, you know? You are supposed to make the guy uh, not knock down, but not uh, killing. You can see the next one. We'll skip this one. We'll just skip. Okay, yes, this is something else. <laughs> Not in Omo Valley. Now on to portraits here now. So the next. Yes, time. and I wanted to. Oh, sorry, my my phone. Uh, right. My phone. Uh, uh, I wanted to to focus. You see me? It's okay. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, uh, I wanted to to focus on the, on fashion, because fashion in the in the Omo Valley is very important. Of course, they don't have Zara, or they don't have uh, they don't, don't have this kind of shop. But the Chinese, they bring some uh, some clothes, some glasses, some decorations, some some uh, beads to the, to those little markets. So they they used to to sell this kind of stuff to the to the Muslim uh, uh, how can I say uh, dealers mm -hmm. and the Muslim dealers they come in the markets and they sell to the tribes. So every six months you have a kind of new fashion. And on this year, it was three, four years ago, the new fashion was to get some glasses. So all the tribes, they bought some glasses. Remember that the tribes, they have some money because they have a lot of cows. So as soon as they sell a cows to, uh, to, uh, to some uh, people coming from Addis Ababa or something like this, they earn a lot of money, in fact. So you can skip to the next one. And it's very interesting to see how their imagination is so, so big. You see, the, the man uh, sells some clips and they, they invent, they create some new hairstyle, some new haircut to put the clips everywhere because the clips is very cheap. So they can buy many, many, many. So this girl, she's a girl, she put one, two, three, four, five, six, perhaps 20 clips on her face. And where is she from? Where, whereabouts is she from? She's, she, uh, this one is a banner. It's like a cousin of the hammer. 
So uh, it's a place called uh, Dimeka. Mm. It's a small village. And once a week in all the villages of Omo Valley, there is a big market. So the thing is you come to the market with the nicest clothes, the nicest jewels, one more time to seduce the, the young men who come with the best dress or the best uh, skirts, the, the, the best uh, uh, orn ornamentation, you see? Oh, you... Uh, this is a man, this, this one is a man. And so on this year, for example, the, I don't know, it's very funny because the, the Chinese, they, they, they sent some uh, plastic flowers. So they started to, to bring some plastic flowers and the, the men boot those plastic flowers and put on the head like this. And suddenly in, in few weeks, all the men had those plastic flowers. But if I go back this year, it will be something different. So it's really interesting to see how they take the, the things coming from China or <laughs> from Europe mm. and, and, and they put them, they, they mix it with their traditional uh, uh, decoration because the, the necklace is traditional, for example, and the headbang is traditional also. By the handbag, you can say this man is from the Bana, this man is from uh, uh, the Morsi, this man is from the Karo. It, it says the tribes you belong to. Yeah. Okay. Next, that, let's, um, there are two um, more photographs here coming up of us. There's a different tribal group here coming up. And then there's some portraits. I do want to dwell on the portraits in just a second. So we'll just talk about these two now, and then you've got some portraits coming up. In fact, this, this is the same, uh, this is the Gada. So the Gada, they take place in uh, Borana and they take place also in the Karayu. Karayu is uh, the big tribes. The, most of the people, they think they are Afar, but no, they are not Afar. They look the same with the Afro, haircut and so on, but they are enemies with Afar. They fight every week, every week they kill each other. They steal some cows. It's a big, big uh, war that they do for years and years and years. And I, I had a chance, I could see a Gada. I was the only foreigner in the Gada because in fact, there was one educated Karayu who was living in Italy. He had uh, some help from a company. So he learned English and he went to Italy to, to work. And the guy saw on the internet my pictures and he sent me a message saying, in uh, one or uh, two weeks, there is the Gada. I say, what's the Gada? He say, every eight years we have a new chief, blah, blah, blah. And he says, please come. I say, okay, <laughs> uh, uh, sorry. I, I will see if I can come, but, yeah. uh, and it, I could come. And you had some uh, thousands of people, really thousands of people jumping, dancing. It was really, really incredible to see. So I, I was lucky to, to take some pictures of this place. And it happens that night also, it, it lasts for two days. And uh, they were so happy because I had a torch, you see, to make uh, to to make the pictures, and I could uh, I could make uh, I could put some lights during the dances, and it was the first time that the people saw the dances at night like this. So and I was a kind of the um, I don't know how to say, um, the the flag of the region is it Omoru? How do you say the um, the region there? It is Oromo. Yes, Oromo, it is yeah. Oromo. They are part of Oromo. Those people, and uh, it is in the news because you know the. The, the prime minister is Oromo and is fighting against the Tigray people who had the powers for decades and decades. So, but those people are Oromo, but you know, Oromo is so big. So for them, they say we are the real Oromos because we kept the tradition. Right. So this is the, the way they, they, they show, they, they speak about themselves. Yeah. Now let, let's take the, the two next photos. Now, um, for people who don't know your work, Eric, you, you're yeah. famous for taking portraits, outstanding portraits of people from around the world. We've been focusing on just a very small body of all your work and looking at, at, at the tribes. But I want to talk also about how you go about taking the photographs, how you go about gaining people's trust as well, um, because it, it's, these people often don't know really what you're doing, do they? Yeah, some people, they, I want to tell the truth every time I speak about this because it is important. Some people, they know very well the business. <laughs> mm -hmm. They see a lot of tourists, so mm -hmm. they ask for money. You have to deal before, etc. They, they even know how to, to pose in front of the sun, in the back. It's incredible. Some other people, like, for example, the Surma, they don't see so many. And if you go in the deep forest in the, of the Surma, you can meet this kind of people. She's a girl. She has the labrette, you know, so it means that uh, she has a big ass. I'm really sorry. 
Uh, right, don't worry. We'll I have a problem, problem with the uh, with the iPhone. No, no, it's good. It's we're fine. You keep no, no, talking. It's, it's fine. It's, I'm sorry. I tried to fix it, but uh, uh, you can see me. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we're good. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, just to make a, a small uh, thing about the labret, the labret is important in the in the surma. I will take it by hand because it's the, too complicated. The, the for lips me. we're talking about and the the ceramic plate that they put in in the the lips. Yeah, it's a clay. It's a, it's made uh, with clay. They put it in the oven and it becomes. So this labret is very important because the labret, the lablet, lablet, <laughs> will give you the price of the woman when she will marry a man. The wow. biggest the labrette is, the most expensive the girl is. So the problem is that many girls, they don't want anymore the, the stretchy lip like this. Yeah. Because yeah. When, they, when they go sometimes in other village or sometimes when they go to Addis Ababa, the educated ones, everybody mocks them. It's yeah. a big, big, big problem. But for the, for the, for the parents, it's important to sell the girl to the man's family at a high price, like 20, 30, 40 cows. So there is a big gap of generation coming in this tribe. The girls, the teenagers say, we don't want any more cut in the, in the lips, yeah. but the parents, they still oblige them to do. So it's a little bit sad. To come back for the pictures, the way I take the pictures, so there is two solutions. The people, they know the rules, so it's very easy. It's not very interesting because most of the time, they even know how to pose and they can take the pictures instead of you. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh, but what is very interesting is to meet some people who don't see so many tourists. And there, you take time. You don't rush to the people. You don't show the money because you will have to pay. In Omo Valley, every time you have to pay at the, in the end. And the good thing is to try to understand what they do, what kind of ceremony they will have what kind of uh, uh, arrangement they are making. And this is the kind of thing, for example, this girl, I, I say, wh where do you, do you get the meat? Because you never kill the cows, mm. you see? They, they don't kill the cow, the cow is it's too expensive to, to be killed. And in fact, sometimes when an animal is dead, they sell parts of the animals. And I was lucky this, this time, there was a dead animal and some people went to, to, to take this. And this girl, she had to walk like 10 kilometers to go back to her village. And I was lucky because I met her on the road. Yeah. And, and the thing I do most of the time with the tribes is I give them a Polaroid. For us, it's nothing, you know, it's like a-, a Polaroid, yeah, a Polaroid photo, a small photo. Yeah. Of that. yeah, yeah. And you cannot imagine, it's something really impressive first for them. And the funny thing is, most of the time they look at the Polaroid and they throw it away. Because they, when they see the Polaroid, they see on the pictures too small, they say. They want a picture with the real size. <laughs> so it's very, very complicated to explain to someone from uh, Omo Valley that it will be very, very complicated to get a, a real size Polaroid of themselves. You see what I mean? Or something very interesting also, the girls, they look at the Polaroid and they say, okay, do it again. I say, why, why? Like, I don't have uh, hundreds of Polaroid with me, you know? And they say, look, my eyes is closed or my hair is not nice or my heart is not. So they, they have never seen any pictures of themselves, mm. but they have this, this eye, they have this taste of how they have to look to, to really be at their best. Okay. So it's very, very interesting. Re I really. want to show one more photograph and then I'm, we're going to stop and we're going to open up um, the questions because we're, we're, we're going to run out of time soon. Um, how do you, you I, I'm so keen to also to talk about the, the other places you've traveled to and the experiences you've had elsewhere, but just tell me about the actual process of taking the, 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 the photograph. Usually, and I think some people will be interested in, in this of the, um, the technical side of it, um, you're on a quite a short shutter stop. You're quite, you're very close, a very close focus. Just tell uh, us. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I use uh, 85 millimeter, uh, which opens at uh, 1.2. So 1.2 is uh, sometimes uh, tricky because the depth of field is so, so small. So 
usually I shoot at 1.4, 1 1.6. Uh, it means that I focus on the eyes. You mentioned it uh, previous, previously. Yeah. So because I want to show the eye totally clear, totally focused, and I don't care about the other part. Of course, you will have the, uh, so not the eyes are, are clear. And some yeah. part of the, the face are also clear, but it makes some, something very deep in the, in the way to take the pictures. It's not easy because in this case, I take in a Rafale mode, you know, Rafale mode? Tuck, 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 tuck. Yes, yeah, Rafale, yeah. <laughs> okay, you say it uh, the same in, like in French, because if you move like half a centimeter, it will be totally blurred. So you have to train to do this. Yeah. You have to, to be concentrated and it's not easy because usually in a mobile, when they hear one click, they move, they, they go away. <laughs> so it's very complicated to say. Let's go back to photo number seven, if we can, and then we'll drop the slides just because I want to see, go back to this is the, um, the, 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 there was quite a tragic story to go with it. It was about female genital mutilation. But if you go back to that portrait, the, the number seven, if we just roll, scroll back through. Um, so Eric's taken photographs, Papua New Guinea, North Korea, um, Northern Iraq, um, you know, huge number of places around the world. But the, the images that you will have seen, you will have seen his photographs are like this one here. This is the, these are the images possibly that he's probably best known for. And that's really when the, the eyes are, you know, the, the eyes really, really do stand out. So I, I was lucky. I was lucky because she has green eye, green eyes, and she's afar, which is not uh, common in the tribe. So I was lucky and it was complicated because I was in the street, it was market day. So I imagine there is like 100 people around. She was with the, with the husband and I asked the husband, of course, can I take a picture of your wife with my guide who translates? And the man says, no, <laughs> say, oh, please, I would like to take a picture of your wife because she's beautiful, blah, blah, blah. I can give you a color read. And the man says, no. So I, I break the tradition and I, I show a color read to the lady. Yeah. And she understood because I, I had some color read of other girls saying, I can do this for you. And the man, Everybody came around, of course, the, the 100 people around want to, wanted to see the Polaroid, you see what yeah. I mean? And in fact, the man has to go away and let the girl make the picture. And she was so happy. She was really, really happy. And I was happy also because she has some really nice eyes. But imagine you do this in the street. You have 100 people in your back pushing just to see in the camera. And you have like, let's say, 10 seconds to take the good picture. So it's really... This is interesting also because it's a real challenge to get the picture with the eyes not blurred, with the face, with this kind of intensity. And very important also for the photographers who are listening, choose the background. The background is very important. If I take the same picture with a kid making like this in the, in the back, it's not the same story. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So when I'm, I am in a village, first I try to find some backgrounds and as I wait, one hour, two hours, just waiting for people who pass there and say, oh, stop, please, can I make a picture? Can you go in front of this? Yeah. And in Ethiopia, it's very good because they have some colorful colors on the walls, some pink, some red, some, <laughs> you cannot imagine the colors. And on this day, I was, I was lucky because there was big shops, but uh, there, was, there were some shops, but not very nice. And just a little place with this green background. So sometimes it's really, uh, a question of being lucky you know yeah i i'm super impressed by your ability to to take photographs in very difficult and challenging circumstances and um i mean i know you traveled for to north korea uh, between about 2008 and 2012 uh and i just i want to try and find i've got one photograph here because i've got a selection of your photos from north korea um which, which uh really do stand up i'll just try and see if i can put there's, there's a, a photograph of two two young women coming off a train and you just got, got that moment and i thought it was fantastic i can't I, I can't actually pull it up here but but um <laughs> not, not to worry but i'm i think you've got a great ability to do it in very difficult circumstances as well um let let's bring um <clears throat> some some questions um back in so let's if i can bring my screen back up and i can't see what's going here 
I seem to have lost my um, I can I know I'm on the screen here, but while you, you are on screen, yes, you are you are live on screen. What yes. I need to do is um, <laughs> questions. And so here we go. There we go. It's come back to where we are. So yeah, Hil Hillary, you've got a, a good question coming up. So Hillary Matthews, go ahead, Hillary. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for those absolutely stunning photographs. It's absolutely wonderful to see those. Thank you. That, the lady you just showed us, she was absolutely, what a gorgeous, gorgeous photo. Uh, but I was curious whether these peoples, these tribes that you've spent time with, do they, do they, does the central government in Addis Ababa have anything to do with them or do they just lead, lead their lives completely independently of Addis Ababa? It is a very interesting question. In fact, there is, a, to be honest, the government, they try to improve the quality of life of the tribes. So it means that they open some schools for education, they open some dispensaries for health, but they, sometimes they have school, but no teachers. Sometimes they have some uh, uh, dispensaries, but no medicines. So it's complicated because the people who teach or the people who come to cure the, the, the tribes, they, they come from Addis Ababa, they come from the North, they come from a very different part of Ethiopia and they come without the family. And it's very, very difficult to come in this place and to live in this place because you cannot go dancing at night, you cannot go to, the, to see a movie, uh, you don't have electricity most of the time, you don't have television. It's really, really the far west. So I met some uh, teachers who were coming from the north of Ethiopia. They, they even, uh, they were sleeping in the classroom. You see, they just had a mattress and they were sleeping in the classroom because they say we don't have enough money to, to rent a little uh, house, a little hut. And the classroom is made with the concrete, not, uh, not like with the, wood, uh, the wooden thing of the, the huts. So for them, it was more secure to be in a place like this. So for 10 years, I see some big efforts from the government, but first the tradition, it's very hard. For example, the hammer, the many men, many fathers told me, I don't want to sell my kids to school because when they go to school, I have to buy some books. I have to buy some clothes because in the school, some they refuse the kids with the traditional clothing. And he says, when you have a goat skin, you don't have to wash the goat skin. But if you put a t-shirt, you have to wash the t-shirt. So you have to buy some uh, powder to wash the t-shirt. So you, you have to spend some money for this. For us, it is ridiculous. You see what I mean? But for them, it changed totally the way they live and the way they spend their money. And they are not very rich. Because when I say they are rich because of the cows, they have a lot of cows, they are rich, but they don't sell the cows. You see what I mean? It's like somebody who has some uh, Facebook uh, um, action uh, uh, stock, but you never sell it. So, okay, you are very rich, but you, you just have the stock. You don't have the money back. So it's something that will change, I think, but it will take so much, so much time. But Eric, are you, um, it would seem to me that there's so much stacked against them in terms of development, the expansion of the state, um, you know, the dams, one example, the, la the, the experiment was selling off the land was a disaster. But you get the sense that the state, the Ethiopian government is ambitious and that, um, you know, that it's going to be quite hard for them to sustain um, their, their ways of life. At this moment, those people, the tribes we are speaking, we are watching the, the pictures, they don't have electricity, they don't have running water, they have difficult, small access to health small access to education, which is brand new. So in fact, they live like the grandfather lived. So mm. in the daily life, nothing has changed, really nothing. The only thing that changed is that for 15, 20 years, they see more and more people coming from outside. So people from, uh, from uh, Addis Ababa and so on, people from foreign countries like the tourists, mm. of course. And they see that there is something different. And the thing which is changing a lot is Facebook. Because the, the young people, they have some Chinese uh, 
uh, mobile phones, which are very, very cheap. And they, can, they, they go on Facebook all day long. And they see all the wealth of the, of, uh, that, 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 that we have. Mm. And at this time, I don't know many, many Ethiopians who leave the country to, as a refugees, you know, like Eritrea or like Sudanese people. You see what I mean? Or Yemeni people or mm. Afghani people who, who leave that country and want to go to Europe, to UK, to have the good life. Until now, it, it didn't happen, people from the tribe. But more and more, I have some friends living there, you know, who are students and who, who keep the tradition. And they say, I, I really want to leave this, this, this shitty country mm. because I, I want to have a car. I want to have the camera. I, I want to have this. And the most impre impressive thing for me is those guys, they speak to you about iPhone. Yeah. And the I other thing we really haven't spoken about, and I must bring Diane Cook in, who Diane's got a question and we'll bring Diane in just a second. But it, it, by and large, most of those tribes have a male um, dominated patriarchy. The, the men have position of power and authority and the women are doing all the hard work. Yeah, for sure. In all the tribes, the men, they decide, they do. And for example, there is a, I don't know if we can speak about this, but the Mingi. The Mingi is a tradition in the Hammer and in the Karo tribes. If a boy or a girl, uh, if a baby born, uh, boy or girl, when the parents, when the, yes, when the parents are not married, mm. or if the first teeth is the upper teeth, which come out, if they are twins and so on and so on, they are killed by the community. So it's a crazy, crazy story, but you must understand that some people try to say, stop this tradition. It's really cruel. It's bad, bad, uh, bad propaganda for us. Mm -hmm. The tourists are shocked and so on. But the men say, if we don't kill this boy because he has the upper teeth coming first, we will have some drought. We will have a big curse on the village. And this is said by the elders. And when I say elders, it's people of 40, 45, you know, not, uh, not 80, 80 years old. So, I mean, it's, it's the generation from the, it's the, the, the generation from uh, the 70s, the 80s. And it's very, very complicated to deal with this. There is a man called Lale. He was educated. Now he lives in USA. He was awarded by National Geographic uh, three or four years ago. And he, he convinced the Caro, I think not all the Caro, but the Caro from his village, to stop these killings and it worked and he, he has made an orphanage in Jinka where he gets the baby who have this lingi problem and he takes them from the bush before they are killed. So are we talking about, are we talking about cleft pa people the cleft palate or just because they got teeth in the upper? No um... just the teeth just the teeth if the teeth coming out is the upper teeth it means it's a curse it's, it's crazy it's crazy and uh, you have a list like this it's really yeah. crazy and i met a woman in the village of lale she had 15 kids killed 15 babies killed and why because the man she was supposed to marry had not enough money to pay the cows for the family you see when you you buy the the, the woman in fact you yeah. buy your your um, your wife sorry so I don't speak about uh, 10 years or 20 years ago. I speak of now. It happens now. Mm -hmm. So imagine when the, uh, imagine right. the government, when they come in this place and say, you have to stop this, you have to do this. It's so complicated, so complicated. Yeah. yeah. Diane Cook, you've got a question. Diane, while you, whilst you're asking your question, we're going to bring more photos because we haven't shown them all. And there are other things uh, I'd love everyone to see before we finish off. So Diane, ask your question. And Isabel, if you can bring up the rest of the photos while we're at it. I think we need to, uh, there's a, a, a grandmother and child on, on image 38, I think we're on. Go, go ahead, Diane. Hi, Eric. I mean, um, I think you sort of semi-answered my question because as I was looking at your photographs, um, I was particularly struck with, you know, we have the naked men, and the cows and, and all of that. And then we have the younger people going and getting all the sort of kind of blingy stuff from the Chinese. Um, and it was really kind of made, made me think, well, how much longer are, are, are they going to live in this way in the, in the tribes? And do you see this as really being 
you know, the end of something that you're photographing. Each time you go back, Eric, things change, don't they? Every You're conscious of that. I beg, uh, I, I know that you just said earlier that, you know, there are, it's incredibly traditional. They're still operating this um, way of life, but you are seeing things change quite quickly. The things change, but the ceremony keep on going on. Uh, I go in Ethiopia for years and years and years, and the bull jumping, they keep on doing it. The Jimmy, they, they keep on cutting the girls. Uh, the Donga, they keep on doing. You see, I think only education can change the things because educa and education through the girls. Because, for example, I was in South Sudan in February, and I met some girls of 15, uh, 15 uh, 14, who spoke English because they went to school. Uh, they, they are from Mundari, so it's a tribe with uh, cows, the same, you know, no electricity, no running water, no access to television, whatever you want. And the girls, they really want to change this. And the girls, they fight to go to school, like in Ethiopia, to, uh, to have education and to go after in Addis or in big towns mm -hmm. and to start to come back after later as nurse or as uh, technical guys for the water and so on to show that education can change also the way they live. Because when you, you, you explain to people that by digging and putting a pump, they will have the water instead of going to 10 kilometers to bring back the, the liters of water on the, on the head or on the back with the woman and the, and the children, people are, understand this. But for me, the men, I told you this, Michael, before we took uh, <laughs> the, the chat, it's so comfortable for the men, you know, the situation. They, okay, they fight with the enemies, for sure. They are good warriors. But for the daily task, it's just the, the woman work for the children, for the water, for the food, for the wood, for anything. Every, the, the woman, they do everything. One man can have many, many wives, as many as he wants, just a question of money. The older they are, the youngest girls they will take because uh, they say that it's good for, <laughs> for sexuality. So sometimes it's very shocking what you can hear in, the, in, the, in those tribes. But I don't see the things changing so much in the mentality, in the, in the daily life because of the car, because of the mobile phone and so on. Yes, it changed. But in the mentality, uh, I don't see the, the things uh, changing so much. Even in Kenya, you, you know, you have the Rendile, the Samburu, the Maasai, all those tribes, they saw tourists for much more time than in uh, Ethiopia. They are much more educated in Kenya because they, they have a very good network for education and so on. But the Maasai and so on, they keep on doing the, the tradition, the circumcision, the rite of passage, the Moran, which are the, the young warriors. So it, it's hard to say. Uh, I, I think uh, one last thing about this for a question of geopolitics, let's say, but what the government does they send a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people from other places of Ethiopia in Omo Valley as workers, as consultants. So, for example, in the bodies, uh, five years ago, there was no, just some tourists, few tourists, and the body people. Last, uh, two years ago, when I came back, there was like 200 worker, Ethiopian workers, but not from the body. Guys with a t-shirt, with the blue jean, and so it starts to change because of this also, like the Chinese do with the, <laughs> with the Tibetan people and so on, you know. But I'm not sure it's a, it's a, it's a wish of the government to, to do this. It's just because of economic opportunities that they need some people uh, to be sent in the, those places. Okay, let's you bring... understand what I mean? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, let, let's, we, I'm very keen for us to see the rest of these photos. So... Eric, just talk about this, and we've got about eight more photos to show here. Let's just run through those, and then we've got another question from Audrey Rulf, and then we will have to wrap up. So what's this, Eric? Uh, sorry, I was not on the... Uh, Ava, this is, she's the girl I was speaking about. She had 15 kids killed because yeah. she was not married with the man, so it is the Karo tribes. And last year, she had the, they had the money to pay the, the cows for the family, so she get married. She's not 75, she looks very old, but no, she's like uh, 40. She's, uh, in fact, she's, she's not so old, but she, she does all the hard work. You see how, I, how you look when you are 40 in the tribes. It's really impressive also to, to see the, 
the face and the, the, the muscles of the woman. And so the, she, she has a baby now and she could keep him. She was not supposed to kill him because she's married. And so the boy or the girl, I don't know on the pictures, she's not Mingi. So it was a happy end. Even this, this woman, she was in National Geographic in USA. They made a, a story about this, this woman. I mm. did not believe this. So when I went to the village, I said, I want to see this woman. And I made an interview and she says, yes, I had to do this. She was crying and she says, uh, it was horrible, but I had no choice. If mm. I didn't do it, the elders pushed me away or even killed me because there was a curse on the village. Amazing. Let's have a look at the next slide. Uh, and this is the orphanage that I was speaking about, uh, yeah. made by uh, Lale. So she's a Caro girl. She was Mingi, but uh, Lale and his team, they had a call from someone from the village saying there is a Mingi, they will kill her tomorrow. Please come, come, come. And they come and they take the girl or the boys and they put them in an orphanage in uh, Jinka. So now they have like uh, 50 uh, kids and uh, children and uh, girls. And they are educated and they have some good, uh, mm. uh, they are in good health, they have some education. So it's a good, good thing. Let's take the next slide, come. Oh, it's a special ceremony. <laughs> this one is very special. I think I was really ill on this one. It is called the, the Proud Oaks Ceremony. You see, the Proud Cow Ceremony. To show that you are wealthy and to show that you are a big man in the Dasanet tribe, you invite a lot of men with everybody has the guns. It's very impressive to see. You kill the cows, you open the stomach and you take <laughs> the content of the stomach and you put all over the face of your friends. So on these pictures, it was a baby who was, uh, he, he, he had some, uh, I don't know the name in English, so let's say some dung, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> but it, it, it's a mixture of, uh, of dung and some uh, grass, you know, from the stomach. Mm -hmm. You cannot imagine the smell at this moment <laughs> with the blood, the stomach open. It was incredible. And uh, same thing. It was really a lucky time because I heard there was something special, but nobody wanted to tell me because they want to keep this secret. I ask, I ask, I ask, and we have to walk like three or four hours. It was crazy with the camera and uh, with all the equipment. And when we arrived, we have to make an agreement with the, the leader. It was okay because it was the man who organized the ceremony. So it was clear. And we could take so many pictures like this. And this is uh, the same ceremony. Uh, so they put the, the dung and the, the grass everywhere, all over the body, on the legs, mm. on the face. And they wanted to put on me because it's, it's a friendship gesture to put and some why dung. Why didn't you accept, Eric? Why didn't you accept? Because I was working, <laughs> I had no time to do, to do this. Quoi. <laughs> um, let, let, I want to bring in, uh, this, is, this is very interesting, but just before we do that, Audrey Wolf, you've got a question. So or, if we can bring in Audrey and open up her microphone. Uh, this is the Hello. last question. Go ahead, Audrey. Are you there, Audrey? Am I there? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. We can see the uh, I, I can't get over the ceramic plate and the lip. I've seen pictures of that before, but does that stay all the time? And if so, how do they eat? We can uh, see the top of your head, Audrey, and your book. <laughs> I know. Well, let's see. Okay, there it is. Show, show us your labrette. Show us your... <laughs> yes, the lip disc is very... I, I spoke about this. Uh, when they, they... In fact, when they remove... When they have the, the lips stretch, okay, mm. they have to fill it with the, the labrette, okay? Yeah. So the lip disc. But when they remove it to eat, to speak, because uh, usually they, they remove to speak, uh, the woman, they, they hide it because it's uh, um, an embarrassment. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, I mean, yeah. this is right. For them, it's very embarrassing to, to, to show the lip yeah. without the labrette. It's like for us to be naked in the street, uh, <laughs> in the middle of a big street, you know? So it's very funny because those women are, are not shy at all. They are very strong, they, they push you, they, but when they don't have the, the, the clay, they are like this. And they, like the Japanese girl, you know, the Chinese girl, when they, when they laugh, they, they do like this. And so, like I said before, the lab, they, they're still doing, doing it because for the parents, it's, it's, the, it's a way to sell the girl to the family of the, the man. 
and the girl, the man has to pay for with cows. Yeah. So the, the bigger it is, the more expensive well, yeah, the girl will be. The bigger the dairy. The bigger the dairy. Let, let's yeah. move on to the scarring here. And this is the last few slides that we've got here. And many tribes in southern Ethiopia do this. And uh, just, just talk us through. We've got about, so I think we've got um, six or so slides just to look through here. Yes. So this is a very, very uh, impressive tradition. So there is two, two ways to, to do the scarification. You do it for beauty. Most of the time, the women do it for beauty. It's just like, uh, like, like us, we put some uh, lipstick in, uh, in Europe or in <clears throat> France, in England, whatever. And the women, they cut. And the men, when they do this, it means that they, they killed someone. So they killed someone or they killed a big animal, but most of the time they killed someone. So for, for example, this man is a Toposa. Toposa is a tribe which is both in South Sudan and in uh, Ethiopia. They don't see a lot of tourists in this place. It is called Kangate. It is a dusty town with a lot of military men from South Sudan coming there to eat, to drink some beers. Very strange atmosphere. You see what I mean? Very, very strange atmosphere. Guns and alcohol, but with military guys. So not very, not very nice. So you can go to the next pictures to, to see the different things. So the women, they like to do this on their shoulders and they, they like to do this also on the breast and they like to do this on the, the belly. Yeah, you see on the breast. So this, this girl is from the Mursi people and for them, it's a decoration, it's a choice. It's, it's not the father or the mother who says you have to do this. It's just a choice of decoration of the body. It hurts a lot when they do this. So this is a toposa, the back of a, a toposa. And it hurts a lot when they do this because they use a, a acacia spine. They put in the in the skin, they pull, and they cut with a razor blade. You can see this I on the next there, slide. I think there is a picture, yes. So it's really, really painful. Acacia thorn, isn't it? It's an acacia thorn, is it? Okay, yes, 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 acacia, acacia thorn, sorry, yes. Uh, and, if, and with a razor blade, huh? Clack, just a, a blade. And in fact, there is some big problem with this because they share the blade. Oh, so they share also hepatitis. Sometimes they share AIDS because of the workers coming from Addis Abeba or the, the truck drivers. You know, in, in Ethiopia, the AIDS is very, very high in, uh, in rate. So they, they don't understand this. So for the photographers who are watching this, the best gift to do to those people is to bring some, some uh, um, brand new blades, you know, to, to have a, like this, they have a lot and they, they avoid to, to share it. Go on and to it was, few slides. Ju 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 just the last uh, thing, uh, it was a girl of 12 on the pictures and I asked her if it was, uh, uh, if she had pain or not because she didn't show any emotion. And she says, yes, I had a lot of pain. I was nearly uh, collapsing but I cannot collapse because it will be shame for my family. So during those, skin, those kind of ceremonies, like for the circumcision, they must not cry, they, they must not show any emotion. If not, it will be shame for the family. And uh, same again, uh, this one, she has some scars on the, on the forehead, uh, which is very painful, very, very painful. And uh, so you, you can see different kinds of uh, scarification. Right. right, the next pics, uh, there is another one, no? Yeah, there's one more. Yeah. Yes, the same tribe also with the same kind of, uh, of scarification on the on the forehead. Okay. Now we've got two one two more slides here that are from the further north. I think on the plateau, these are I think two Amharic gentlemen. Um, here. Yes, I, I, ju I just wanted to 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 have a word about this. They are not from tribes, of course, but it's a special tribe in Ethiopia. They are called the veterans. The veterans are the, the guys who, who, who fought for the World War II uh, against, after against uh, the Italians, sorry. And after some of them uh, have been sent in Korea to, to fight with American uh, soldiers. So they are like gods in Ethiopia. People respect them a lot, a lot, a lot. They have a free house. Uh, they have uh, some free food, etc. And they are so proud to show the the uniform to tell their stories. It's really, really special, but uh, I met them. I made a lot of pictures of those people. They are very old. They are like 80 something, most of them. And they, they are really touching people and very interesting to meet. 
Uh, my thanks very much to Eric Laforgue for his wonderful photos. Thank you again, Eric Laforgue. It's been Thank wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody. Thanks.